Hi, and welcome back to episode four of season four of The Canary Room. Uh, I must start the show today with a, with a huge thank you to everybody who took the time to contact me uh, over Facebook, um, sending their, their very best wishes, their warmest regards. Uh, I'm pleased to say that the family and I are now fully recovered from COVID. Um, still a little bit tired. You might be able to hear it uh, as the episode goes on today, but we're going to going to take a run at it today. Uh, coming up on the show, well, question time. Uh, we're going to meet the the final um, uh, five canaries, the final clear fives today. So we'll have met all the lines that we're running. Uh, we've got the the Norwich notebook, the Norwich well. They've taken over from the Red Poles, really, at being a, a heartache provider uh, for me over the last uh, couple of weeks since we were last filming. We've got the new Colour Corner, and we've got the Native Diaries as well. Got some new arrivals for the Native Diaries, so something to look forward to there. Um, a huge thank you to everybody who has donated to the channel as well, uh, to David Taylor, uh, thanks very much, Taylor, uh, David. To Stephen Thomas, David Huntington, Tony Corns, Beethoven Dellison, uh, Martin Gentles, and of course, our good friend down under, Michael Burling. Uh, thanks, Mike. Much appreciated, and for all the kind messages as well, mate. So, grab yourself a cuppa. Mine is just out of shot. It's in shot now. Sit back, and as always, Enjoy the show. First up today, we'll uh, we'll have a little look at the um, the final lot of fifes uh, that we're going to run with this year. It's the clear line of fifes. Now, I'm running with um, four buff cocks, uh, a father. Uh, and three sons. The sons are all half brothers. Uh, one of the birds was Bird of the Week a couple of episodes back. Um, and then I've got two clear yellow cocks, which I'm running as, um, as actually as straight pairs. So there's a clear buff hen with them uh, and a 10% buff hen. And the clear buff cocks themselves are of um, good quality, good, nice, short birds. Um, got nice tight to them um, good position on them as well um, really nice birds and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they breed and the clear hens well I've got nine clear yellow hens they're not all completely clear there's a couple of ticked birds in there um, but there is um, as I like to do there's um, a couple of sisters uh, a couple of sisters and a mother um, and then three birds which are related, but um, they're not uh, they're not sisters. But the, these uh, uh, really nice clears. I think on the clear yellow hens, I'm running with some of the best clear yellow hens that I've that I've ever run with um, here in the Canary Room. So um, you'll notice behind me, all of the hens now are singled off. So. Um, I had a, a day in the Canary Room yesterday, so the first day really that I managed to to get out of bed properly. Uh, so naturally, I spent it in the Canary Room. Um, I deep cleaned all of the cages. I uh, I've just taken it really steady. Um, I, I I sanitized everything through um, with a, a disinfectant, a veterinary disinfectant as well. So. Um, nine light clear yellow hens and then a couple of light buff hens as i say they're just set up as pairs which is um unusual for me um the, the two very strong clear yellow cocks that i'm using this year and and certainly they could have um you know happily run over a, a, a couple of um a couple of other hens but because i'm using the variegated this year um and i've got a couple of lightly marked and a or lightly marked and a uh a clear bird in the variegated line of I'm just going to run these as, as pairs and, and, and see what they produce and um, so I'm very much looking forward to them hopefully they won't give me too much trouble famous last words isn't it famous last words I say as soon as I utter the words hopefully they won't give me too much trouble 
you know they're going to give me nothing but trouble in the series season ahead. So I've got um, a flighted buff hen in there uh, and an unflighted buff hen. They're sisters. Um, and then with the, um, the clears here, vast majority of them are unflighted birds. Um, and actually with the fifes this year, um, the vast majority of the birds are unflighted. There's um, only one over year cock bird, so of uh, I think 14 cock birds that I'm running with the fives this year. I've only got one over year. That's a, a marked departure from previous years for me. Um, I've got a, a, a couple of over year hens, um, although the vast majority of the birds are uh, uh, last year's hens as well. And, and very much a conscious decision. Um, wanted the stud really to take a, a big leap forward this year. Um, obviously, no show season last year. It was the uh, the online natives and Norwich show, which I'm delighted to win. But but no uh, show season last year, and then 2019 very much inundated with judging engagements. So it's been a couple of years since I've um, I've been on the show bench. So the fife is progressing. Um, really progressing as a bird uh, certainly quicker than I can ever remember so um, <clears throat> wanted to make sure that you know I'm breeding a bird this year which is going to be suitable for the show bench so that's our clear line um, four buff cocks two yellow cocks nine light yellow hens and a couple of buff hens as well so let's see over the next few weeks and months how they work out for us it's time now to have a little look at our friends, the natives. It's the Native Diaries. Well, I mentioned some new arrivals. Uh, actually, uh, a trio of new arrivals in the Canary Room in the Natives. Um, my, my huge thanks to Shane, who uh, not only has, um, you know, continuously supplied us with equipment and seed um, now supplied us with some birds so um, so first up having said last time out you know let's look at the siskins they're looking in really good condition I came in the following day after filming the show to find that the hen siskin had uh, unfortunately passed on um, no visual signs nothing fit as a flea the previous day Sometimes it's just birds, isn't it? It can just happen. So um, I, uh, I contacted Shane and um, he was able to supply me. He had a spare brown pastel siskin hen. 2019 bird, so the cocks are 2019 bird as well. So they're together. They seem to have settled in together. Lovely looking bird as well. I think the, um, the cock I've got is an Isabel, so couple of mutations be interesting to see what they produce for us and I happened to mention to Sh uh, Shane while I was uh, chatting to him I said you know I've moved the um, the chaffies on so the chaffinches have moved on I said so yeah, I've got a flight spare um, and uh, and Shane said well I've got you know a pair of Lutino greenfinches if you're interested well you know I have owned greenfinches before it was a long long time ago um, but absolutely you know beautiful birds these uh, they will i think go out in the flight i can't decide yet they're in a double breeder at the moment i can't decide whether to put the bullies in a flight uh, they'll benefit from being in a flight or whether to put the the greenies in there and and, and try and um put them in the flight outside undecided yet so i'm going to um i'm going to dress the flight in the next week or so uh, probably in the next episode we'll see that um, and then I'll, I'll make a decision there. It's still a little bit cold at night, so I don't really want to put stuff just out yet until I know the um, the vast majority of the frosts have gone. So the rest of the British, well, I've trimmed the um, I've trimmed all of the Norwich actually, but the Norwich cock in there, they've been fighting uh, the Norwich cock and the um, the bully hen. So I'm not sure whether that's a good sign or not. Um, I suppose a little bit of aggression sort of shows they're starting to come into a bit of condition. The main native bullies, they're in good form. The um, the the uh, classic cock, he's been really dancing over the last uh, 
week or so. Um, I've not been in the shed that much. Um, uh, I've been sort of in and out to do the drinkers and the seed, but I've not really spent any time in here. But I did catch him um, here doing a little bit of dancing. Um, and then we've got our delights, the um, the red poles. Um, looking, you know, looking nice, these the pair here. They're beaking. Um, top pair haven't shown a great deal of interest in each other, but they've not... Um, don't seem as advanced. I'm still... Don't quite know whether or not um, that is going to be a cock. I think it's a cock. Um, the, the, the clear white bird's definitely, clear white pied's definitely a hen. So um, that's been DNA sexed. And then the um, linnet cock uh, and the Irish fancy hen, they've settled down really nicely. Um, I've managed to get some wire dividers uh, from Dave Rands. Dave came yesterday with um, another delivery of new cages for me which are in the shed yeah uh, so we'll have a little look at them in a minute I've, I've i've ummed and awed about whether to move things around but i've got the pair of um the the other mule in pair the uh, the white hen the white fife hen and the um the uh red pole cock and he actually looks uh, in in better condition now than he did uh, first off so i've got them in a in a muling cage there and um, so i've got the new cages we'll take a look at them in the new color corners in a minute um but i'm i'm, I'm really really pleased with them so um next time out on uh, the to-do list we'll look at dressing the cages because i'll put the um the nest pans in for the season that'll be mid-march it'll still be too early for the birds to go down but um get the nest pans in we're on 12 and a half hours of daylight now coming up to 12 hours 45 minutes in the canary room you can probably hear the um <coughs> the, the cock canaries are <coughs> excuse me the cock canaries are um are in really good voice I've seen the uh, the hen canaries sort of pecking out in the corner. They have squat and no mating yet. Still a little bit too early for that. Um, but yeah, so we'll see with the natives. Um, so apart from the siskin hen, nothing major to report. If only we could say the same about the Norwich notebook. So let's catch up with those absolutely stunning birds. It's time for the Norwich Notebook. I've trimmed all the Norwich up. Um, may or may not be able to tell. Um, but it's been a difficult week with the Norwich. And uh, I guess you, um, you know, you get that time every now and again with canaries. And um, one of the, um, in fact, I've lost two buff cocks. Um, one, unfortunately, I had to cull. Um, it fitted, and um, I don't know whether I had some kind of stroke, but it, it, it came round, and um, I sort of nursed it back, and then it fitted again, and, and it, it's never nice, um, you know, when, when, when you have to do that, but the, the bird had absolutely zero quality of life, and, and that's crueler. Um, so um, I've had to call that. What that means that um, we've got two hens in here: um, a yellow, dark yellow hen, and uh, and what I think is a white hen. Um, I think, as I say, I think it's a white hen. I'm pretty convinced it's a white hen. So I've got a little bit of planning to do. Um, how I might mix things up: the the green buff Norwich cock, just unbelievable. I came in in the morning, it was a week ago, uh, I came in in the morning um, on the Saturday, gave the birds the egg food as I do, fit, racing, belting out song, and I, I was quite excited and, and you know, I'd, I'd sort of, the other buff cock I, I, I knew wasn't going to make it, and I thought, well, you know, I might be able to run him over an allied and, and maybe breed some fawns, and, you know, of course... Mine starts racing, doesn't it? Plans start um, coming to the fore of what I might be able to do. Um, <clears throat> came back in the afternoon to, to shut up, shut the window, just check everything as I do on, on a night. 
and then dead on the, the bottom of the cage just no explanation whatsoever caught him up weight on him you know n nothing it just expired um, so uh, I think what we're left with now is here um, is the, 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 the yellow cock from Keith um, we've got a, a white cock in here we've got a buff cock in here and then I think we've got two hens in here um, so I may use the, the white actually normally you'd, you'd put um, you put a buff over the white but the, the white's got an awful lot of, uh, of feather on it and I'm tempted because the yellow cock up here is such an outstanding bird I, I may be tempted to run him over as I say all the Norwich were trimmed yesterday uh, so they've got less tails now and then um, and they're looking in they're looking in good form the, the rest of the birds are at least so um could have been a lot worse could have lost hens um have lost a couple of cocks as i say which is never nice but it's one of those things we're keeping birds and then um, and the rest of the norwich are looking in um touch wood at least they're looking in good conditions so let's see how uh, how they pan out for well for the rest of the uh, the rest of the season i'm sure there'll be more heartache breeding wise they're getting fitter um, I think it'll be April before they go down I think the new colours will get down before then and we'll get around the way with them so uh, well let's go and have a look and see how the new colours are doing now in their new homes it's time for new colour corner I, um, I mentioned earlier I got the new cages in and um, these are just 14 inch fronts um, so they're slightly bigger than the wire cages that were in situ and 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 for me they just they just complete the bird room and um, you know everything is is sort of uniform now um, double breeders I mentioned about putting wire dividers in um, I have got wire dividers um, now from Dave thankfully um, and I, and I may still do that um, was slightly nervous um, about changing the cages over um, simply because you, you know obviously the wire cages let in an awful lot of light but because these cages are white uh, and finished obviously in white white plastic they too let in an awful lot of light so there doesn't seem as yet certainly there's no feathers um, in any of the bottom of the cages which was a little bit of a worry and and part of the reason for bringing them in as well as the sort of uniformity was that um, you'll remember that I managed to only get five wire cages um, and everything else is six cages high in the canary room with the exception of the flights which are just four cages high and and that was really bugging me basically um, so I'd had sort of five cages here I couldn't get a six in it they, they were too tall um, so now I've got six cages in here so as well as having the, the sort of the five pairs of new colours I've also got the pair of Irish in here as well um, I've seen the cock uh, and the hen feeding each other of, of those and the rest are in, are in really good fitness I, I've done some um, some nest pans for them um, as we hit the first of March uh, and, and early March I'll, I'll put those um, those nest pans in situ uh, and then we'll try and get a, a round with these but um, hopefully the uh, the move won't throw them into a molt that that was the risk but I decided it, it was a it was a risk worth taking um, I've managed to get an extra cage in here I've got now sort of three cages behind me so you know what I wanted to have was some spare cages and I'll, hopefully I'll have a good breeding season if I do have a good breeding season I'm going to need some spare cages the old wire cages and um, they're going to get a, a, a clean down uh, disinfectant and they'll go in the garage as, a, as an overspill so they won't go to um, they won't go to waste at all but yeah really really pleased with this block and, and I think the um, you know the flexibility it's going to give me on an ongoing basis um, as we move forward these are ideal these cages here for um 
for these birds. So um, we're going to take a closer look at one of these because one of our uh, grey wings, our red black grey wings, is going to be this week's bird of the week. As we have um, a we'll look at one of the two cock birds that uh, I got in from Julian uh, as this week's bird of the week, um, <clears throat> I think, I mean, this is, this is not a, a new colour show cage, although it shows the bird off um, quite well. And I think you, you just get to just get to really appreciate the, the quality um, of the bird. Um, I think the you know the markings of it. I think they're a very regal looking bird, and um, I'm absolutely smitten with them. Absolutely smitten with them. And what I'm hoping this year is that I can uh, breed them in sufficient numbers to um, you know to establish a uh, a sort of small stud of the grey wings. And and I don't know you know the agats. I'm I'm a big fan of as well. I, I like the, the sort of the dimorphic canaries, dimorphic obviously meaning that you can visually identify them. Um, I know there's, uh, 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 Julian will tell me that, um, you know, the idea is to have your hens looking like cocks and, and I completely get that. But for me with, the, with these birds, I, I want the, the hens to look like hens and the cocks to look like cocks. Uh, he's a stunner this week, isn't he? It's this week's bird of the week. It is a red, black, grey wing cock bird. You'll uh, you'll notice <clears throat> that the the five hens behind me here are all all singled off, and and this row here of dark buff hens is um, <clears throat> is pretty advanced. They're actually scratching out in the corner. Um, <clears throat> I will. Um, I will try running cocks with them uh, over the next uh, couple of days or so. Um, <clears throat> just got to make sure that the cocks are, are fully firing. They, they sound forward, but, um, you know, I, I have seen actually this hen here squatting. So breeding season, that time already, not a million miles away. Um, time for our, our last feature of the show. It is, of course, it's question time. So on, on question time today, we've got uh, a number of uh, different questions. First one comes in from Christopher Parker. Uh, how do you breed one cock to multiple hens? Um, uh, uh, patience, Christopher, is, is what's required. Uh, and cocks absolutely on top of their game. Um, so what I will do um, is uh, I, I use... Uh, and obviously more hens in the canary room than 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 cock birds um i've got to make sure that the cock birds are absolutely bouncing fit in the first instance so that's key is is having the, the cock birds fit and um, natural daylight is what's important to, to drive fitness and um, i use um uh, i'm giving them egg food twice a week now um that's got all kinds um, of additional supplements in there. I'm using Breed Max as well this year. Um, and, and essentially, Christopher, what I'll do is at the beginning of, um, uh, of the morning, I'll run the cock in with his intended mate uh, and I'll wait to see whether they tread or not. Um, and tread is the term we use for mating. If they do, I'll remove him out the cage and I'll run him back into his stock cage. And then throughout the day, if I'm at home, I'll do it again at lunchtime and again in the evening. Um, where I am, I'm running pairs together. I will just leave those pairs together. Um, so that's my uh, my advice for you on that one. Uh, I hope that helps, mate. Um, Stephen Saunders has been in touch with the show. Um, what would I give? Uh, advice would I give to to Matt twenty years ago? <sighs> I don't know, how long have you got, Stephen? Uh, I mean, a whole series of advice. Um, but where it comes to the birds, I think, um, you know, follow your path. Um, uh, maybe, you know, I've had a, a number of bird rooms um, over the course of, uh, of the last 20 years. I've, I've adapted to, to various different circumstances. I had a period where I was moving home quite a lot. Um, for a variety of different reasons and, and that meant sort of keeping a settled shed was difficult uh, so it'd probably be stay put um, and then um, 
uh, I've always sort of rushed into things, I think, with the birds. And uh, I've sort of, I've, I've regretted that, um, you know, when I got the shed here. Um, I think, bit of hindsight, I might have, uh, I might have got an even bigger room. Uh, I might have, um, you know, I might have looked to, to get into the garage earlier. Um, so really, uh, think things through would be would be. Um, I, I made a number of costly mistakes, both in in terms of birds I bought in um, that I haven't uh, I haven't been able to breed, um, and then you know different things with the room. So it, it would be you know plan. And um, but that said, you know I've learned from every one of those mistakes. So I, I've kind of refined it, refined the mistakes into somewhere near hopefully not as many mistakes um and the last question uh we've got in today has, has come in from um a, a gentleman called dave who who has um who sort of asked me my advice on uh, building a stud of canaries and um you know would you go to lots of different places and acquire lots of different birds um or would you go to one source and um there is um, there's a number of different thoughts, of, uh, trains of thought. You know, if, if you go to one source, Dave, then all you're ever going to get is is what that breeder's got. So you'll get all of the faults that they've got as well. Um, that is something, though, that, that I have done. I've just gone to, to one real source of birds. And, and that's meant that um, I've been able to sort of, you know, predict the outcome of the birds uh, uh, perhaps a little bit better. Um, I think if you're going to keep big numbers, then go into lots of different sources you know you, you'll get lucky you'll breed a few you'll breed some decent birds uh, through the, the the pure thing of numbers um, and I think there's a balance really to strike between numbers and quality um, uh, a man who um, I greatly admired uh, when I first started off was a guy called Albert Clamp who um, never used to breed huge numbers of birds, certainly not by the Fife standard. You know, he'd breed sort of 60 odd birds, um, but was always very competitive with them. He had a, a really good stud of bird. And, and, and for me, that's that's been the sort of way that I've, I've looked to approach my birds, Dave. So it, it, it's been about uh, quality um, uh, you know if I can underpin that with quantity as well great but it, it has always been quality uh, I hope that answers your question uh, it's all we've got time for today um, again my thanks to everybody who's got in touch with the channel if you've enjoyed it hit like if you haven't already subscribed to the show please hit subscribe on our YouTube channel we are edging ever closer to that 10,000 mark um, we've got uh, something that we're going to do at a later date as well with Dave Rands and some cages so stay tuned for that um, as always everyone um, thanks for watching until next time take care